Fruitcake won't have a bad name after this. Probably still will, but we can dream big here at Food for Thought. Hi, I'm Reed, and for the last year, Food for Thought has been diving into the history of some of our favorite foods. So for our last episode of 2021, we thought it was time to take a bite out of a certified holiday classic that's both a little festive, but maybe also a little misunderstood. Of course, I am talking about fruitcake. Yeah, I'm serious. Why are you making that face? Of course, it's fruitcake's great. Listen, it is high time that this lumpy little loaf gets the second chance that it has long deserved. So who's to blame for fruitcake in the first place? That's most likely the Romans who mixed some seeds, a little bit of barley mash, and a little bit of honeyed wine to create this thing called Satura, which you can kind of think of as a portable ancient energy bar that they could carry into battle. Fruit most likely made its way into fruitcake around the Middle Ages, and it went by many names and forms. As fruitcake became more and more popular, it went from being a home-baked tradition to more of a scary mail-order dessert. Well, today, everyone, that changes. We are going to show you how to make a fruitcake that, to put it simply, does not suck. So just like Rome, the perfect fruitcake wasn't built in a day. If you wanna get your fruit mix ready, the star of your fruitcake, if you will, you're gonna to wanna to make it overnight. And it's really simple. Just take some currants, maybe about a cup, Take about a half cup of dried cherries. And then we're gonna take some lemon zest and put it right on top of the fruit. It smells so good. It's like cherry currant lemonade. Now you're gonna do the same thing to an innocent little hazelnut. Just give it kind of a warm holiday feel. Now you're gonna take a little bit of sugar, add that in there. Then for a little holiday spirit, as they call it, we're gonna add about two tablespoons of brandy and a dash for Santa. All we gotta do is mix it all up. Once you get it all mixed up, typically you can cover it and then leave it overnight and everything will get all soaked and boozy. Or if you're like us and you need to do things in a pinch, you can actually saran wrap it, poke some holes in it, pop it in the microwave for two minutes, like I'm about to do. See ya. Now it's time to move on to our cake. This is where you're gonna wanna preheat your oven to 375. Our dry mix consists of some flour, but we're gonna spice things up with a little medley of holiday spices. Some pumpkin spice, some cardamom, some cinnamon. And then we're gonna make things real interesting, some orange zest. And to round things out, just a pinch of salt. Mix everything up, let it mingle together. I'm getting flour everywhere. That's truly what holiday cooking is, is making a mess in the kitchen. It's time to move on to the wet stuff. Two eggs, just crack them on in there. Some sour cream, there you go, meet some eggs. Two quick teaspoons of vanilla extract. Mix things up once again, till it's nice and smooth. It's time to get the rest of our cake base ready. A stick of butter and some brown sugar. Let this whip just until it's got a nice fluffy whipped consistency. What we're gonna do is add about half of our dry ingredients and about half of our wet ingredients at a time. It's not your typical super thick cake batter. It's actually kind of creamy, but it'll turn out good once we cook it. All right. Everything's looking good for our batter. However, there's one more important step that we wanna do. We wanna give it something to rise with. We've got a little bit of baking soda here, and we're gonna take it back to your high school science fair days and add in just a quick tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and check this out. It's gonna foam right up, almost out of the bowl. Add that right into our batter, mix it up, but don't over mix it. You just want this thing to incorporate a little bit and then cut it off. It's time to introduce our fruit to the mix. We've also got some other fruit to add to the party. We've got some crystallized ginger, be about three tablespoons, and then one chopped pear. Just lightly fold all of this in and make sure that every bite has a little bit of pear, a little bit of currant, a little bit of ginger in there. I've got a loaf tin that's already got a little bit of cooking oil in it, a little bit of parchment paper. Just pour this right in there, about an inch from the top. Smooth things out a little bit. We have a beautiful fruit cake that is ready for the oven. I'm gonna go pop that in. We're just gonna wait 55 minutes to the oven we go. All right, our fruit cake is all baked up. It is ready for its grand reveal. Waboom, look at that. Oh yeah, check out all of the layers that we've got going on here. It's like being a prospector and suddenly you see gold and diamonds. This looks great. I think it's time to take a bite, everybody to uh, Fruitcake and its new legacy. Oh my God, this is really good. And I'm not saying that because I have to say that. I'm saying it because it's true. So moist, so juicy. Everything you've heard about Fruitcake, it's a lie. This is the truth. 
This is so good. You're gonna wanna share this with your friends and family. If you would like to help us rewrite the unfair history of this curious little loaf, be sure to check out the full recipe at ship.com slash blog. And if you do happen to make your own, we would love to see pictures. Tag us on Instagram at shipped. And of course, as always in 2022, we hope to keep bringing you some awesome food lessons. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Let us know what you would like a food history lesson on. I'm Reed. This has been Food for Thought. Happy holidays and may fruitcake live on forever. Drive cherries, man. I'm crazy. You do crazy things.